Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Evolve with Emily show. I am your host, Emily Hayden, and you are listening to a solo episode. Today, I want to share with you some recent life experiences, conversations, and just life lessons in general that either I've worked through, I've worked through with my clients, I'm seeing my coaches work through, or that I've come across that I think would be beneficial to you guys today. So the first one is that sometimes you have to take messy action. If you guys don't know, my very first podcast episode ever is actually called Taking Messy Action. So I recommend if you haven't listened to the episode before, go back and listen to that episode because I know it will inspire you to take action even though you don't have everything figured out. And also just help to reassure you that things don't have to be perfect in order for you to execute on them. I recently did a Monday message called Execution is Key, so definitely listen to that one as well. Um, Because it really just helps you to understand that nobody has the perfect plan. Nobody has the perfect, you know, projected outcome. But what you really have to do is just simply get into execution. If you can do that, you will slowly figure it out. If you've never had the opportunity to practice the figure it out muscle, um, maybe you have always worked a job where somebody else told you what to do and somebody else came up with your list of things to do. And if you've never had to like come up with your own list or figure things out that you didn't previously know, then that muscle might be a little weak right now and that's okay. Just recognize it and challenge yourself to practice that figure it out muscle. Most things, by the way, you can Google or YouTube search and you will find it. (laughs) So that is the first one I wanted to share. The second one is talking about contentment in life. So we see those sayings that's like always hungry, never satisfied. And I've mentioned this before, how on one end of things, yeah, absolutely. Like never just be complacent with where you're at. And complacency is much different than contentment. Um, I think that complacency is being okay with the status quo. It's staying exactly where you're at, never going for that fullest potential of yourself, that fullest potential in your relationships, that fullest potential in your business, right? Your business is, it's doing all right and you're able to pay the bills. So you're not really striving to improve. You're not striving to provide a better service. Maybe your ego is in the way of provi- providing a better service for your customers or your clients because you think that your way should be the way when in reality, if you would put your ego aside and learn and grow and have this mindset that you know you can evolve and develop and your, your program, your processes, your services can all grow and evolve with you as well, then you could improve your business even just a little bit more, which would probably provide for more financial freedom for yourself, uh, more freedom within your time management and in your schedule. Uh, same thing with like your relationship. Maybe your relationship isn't great, but maybe it's not bad enough to leave. And so you're just okay because you're content with where it's at. You're, complac- you're complacent in your relationship. I didn't mean content. <laughs> you're complacent in your relationship, meaning... You guys have issues and instead of resolving the issues, you just pretend that they aren't there because they're really not so bad that it's not creating a huge problem. So you'll just bite your tongue and pretend that there's no problem at all. When in reality, that's creating little baby resentments that feel insignificant, but 10 years of, of baby resentments is going to equal to one major resentment for this other person. And all of a sudden, you're going to have no idea why you hold so much resentment and so much underlying animosity towards somebody and in reality it's because you didn't address these small issues because you were complacent with where things were at complacency is a thing that I think in the long run it kills relationships it kills dreams it kills goals and it's funny because it's not funny but it's just interesting how what seems really insignificant right now like a small thing ends up being the really big thing that takes away that thing from you (laughs) I hope you guys followed that. So going into contentment, I believe that contentment is having this perspective to understand that we really only get one day at a time and choosing to live in gratitude for whatever it is that you do have that day, even if it's not the business that you want and even if it's not the perfect relationship that you want yet and even if it's not these things, but choosing to just come from a place of gratitude to say, maybe I'm not where I want to be, but I'm so thankful for what I've been gifted today. I'm so thankful for how hard I've worked to have what I have for today. Choosing to live in contentment is choosing to look around and really appreciate the small things that may be just normal to you now. 
think about it. Look around in your life right now and ask yourself, what seems, what's just normal to me? What's a normal part of my everyday life, right? If I were to do that in my life right now, I would look at the beautiful home that I get to live in and the beautiful neighborhood that I always feel safe in. I would look at the car that I bought this year that I really enjoy and really love and it gets me to where I need to go and it's nice and I love driving it. Um, I would think about my baby Vinny and how much I love and appreciate him. I would think about just all the normal things that make up my everyday life And I would choose to place significance on those things and choose to remember a time when I wished and dreamed and prayed for these things. You know, I remember being very young in college and providing my own way for everything and having some really difficult moments where I couldn't pay for the groceries or I couldn't pay for a place to live and I couldn't afford just things that are now a part of my daily life. I remember driving a car that used to catch on fire on the freeway and literally black smoke would cover it and I would just put on my emergency lights and get over as safely as I could, hoping that no one would hit me and that I wouldn't hit anyone and and getting to the side of the freeway and calling a friend to help me get to work so I wouldn't miss my shift because I couldn't afford to miss one single shift. I remember driving that car. And that car was great. It usually got me to my work and sometimes it didn't, but we figured it out. I would figure it out and I would get to work, right? So something as normal and as simple as driving a car that never catches on fire, (laughs) I'm so thankful for and I keep it at the forefront of my mind. I'm just so grateful for that. So I really choose to live in contentment as I work and seek to be the best version of myself. Like I've said before and previously, I really do believe that if we are alive, that we are meant to pursue the fullest version of ourselves, the fullest expression of ourselves. And I think that if we're still here, we have so much more to learn, so much more to grow, so much more to evolve in our lives, in our mindset, in our spirituality, in our purpose, in our relationships. And to me, it's exciting. I think this adventure of life is exciting. I think it's thrilling. I think it can be really hard at times. I think it can be really confusing at times. And I think that those things are just a part of it. They're simply just a part of life. So when those things come into my life, the confusion, the hardship, the heartache, the hard moments that none of us enjoy, like we don't enjoy going through those things. But I do have a perspective to understand that those things can teach us a lot. Those things will help us to learn and to grow and to evolve in a way where if we didn't experience those things, we wouldn't be able to grow in that area of our life in that way. Which brings me to the next lesson that I wanted to share, which is that we are not human beings with souls. We are souls that are simply having a a human experience. Now, this is a principle that I took from Loyalty to Your Soul, a book that I've been reading that I absolutely love. I recommend to everybody. Um, It is a very like knowledge heavy book. I believe. And so I think sometimes it can be difficult to digest it. I don't think it's the easiest book for everybody to read. I think sometimes you got to read multiple things, but I would encourage you that if you do pick up the book and it, it does seem difficult for you, maybe just switch to a different chapter and learn some of the principles, learn some of these skills. You know, they talk about heart centered listening and what that really looks like and how most of um, listening, it isn't just about consuming the content that someone is saying. So it's not just the words that they're saying, but there's so much more that goes into it. And it teaches you how to be a better listener. I think everybody in the world could be a better listener, myself included. And I think that when you are a better listener, it really does improve the quality of your life, your relationships and everything. Uh, They talk about um, self-forgiveness, compassionate self-forgiveness and what that actually looks like. So the principles and the skills that they teach in this book is absolutely incredible. And I think it helps you to move from a place of unnecessary emotional suffering, which most of the time is self-inflicted, to true healing. And so, again, I want to reiterate that one of the principles that it shares is that we are not humans that have souls. We are souls that are having a human experience. And with that, everything that we experience on this school called earth everything that we experience is simply for our learning and for our growing and for our development and so when you can look at life through that kind of perspective you can really have this 
peace of mind to know that every single thing that you go through will be used for you to learn, grow, and to develop into a better version of yourself if you choose to have that perspective and if you choose to learn from it. Um, Another thing that I wanted to share is that in that book, I thought it was so incredible how it literally spells out that to love is to heal, which is to evolve. And of course, I'm reading it and with my brand and my podcast and everything Evolve with Emily, I'm like, yes, like this is what it's about, loving and healing and evolving. Because any time that you need healing in your life, and usually you can tell that you need healing when you have hurt, when you have emotional suffering, those things usually signify that there is healing that needs to occur at a deep process there, at a, at a deep root. And it's up to you to figure out that root and then to apply healing and to actually heal from something, it's simply just applying love to what hurts. And there's different ways that you can do that. One of the ways I already mentioned is compassionate self-forgiveness. So again, the book, I can't recommend it enough. I I share a lot of those principles through my Evolve X uh, program. And so every single mentorship call, I'm sharing like a principle or two just to get people to open up and think a little bit bigger, think a little bit outside of the box and maybe try on a new perspective and see if it doesn't help. So that is one thing I wanted to share with you guys. Um, Another thing I wanted to share is, you know, and I focus on this in my Evolve X program, but is just daily habits and daily consistent habits. I had a client share on a coaching call how, you know, she was sharing with some of the uh, beginners who are there in their week one and she's in her week, say eight or so. She was sharing how how much this program has impacted her life and saying how, you know, it wasn't this one big overarching thing, but it was actually the structure and discipline of small daily habits. And so I wanted to share that with you guys who are, you know, maybe not even a part of the program to encourage you to develop healthy habits and to make yourself stay consistent on them. Really practice consistency in daily habits that are making you, you know, more dedicated towards your goals, more on target with things, uh, more structured and organized, also more still, more mindful, more peaceful, experiencing more healing, you know, identify what it is that you want more of in your life, identify where it is in your life that you could grow. Um, Maybe you look around at your life and it's so fast paced and it's so structured and so organized that you could actually benefit from having more stillness in your life, benefit from having more uh, spontaneity in your life. And so because of that, because you know that you need more mindfulness, a daily habit that you could put into your daily list is meditation or prayer or a walk in the park and sitting down and just being present, practicing being present in nature. Um, So look at what it is that you want to cultivate and then create your daily habits around that. Because truthfully, you guys, it's the most, it's just the most in seemingly insignificant things in life that end up making the biggest difference. I, this past weekend, um, well, I, I should say first, this past week, at the end of the week, say Thursday and Friday, I noticed that I was struggling to do what I normally do. Meaning like, I mean, I honestly had such an incredible week. I, you know, busted out so much work. I was really in my flow. And by the end of it, I noticed I was struggling to get out what normally flows very easily for me. Um, And so what I did was I tried a few times and then it was Thursday. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to force it. It's just not happening today. You know, this podcast isn't happening today. And so then I would just move into other work Um, with Friday came around and kind of the same thing happened. I got out two podcasts and honestly, I wasn't super happy with them. I didn't necessarily like want to put them out. I I wasn't super proud. It wasn't my best work. But the truth is I showed up and I did my best for that day. 100%. I can definitely die saying I did my best for those podcasts, Um, but they really just didn't. I don't think that they measure up to my personal best. And so my own self judgment wanted to um, not allow me to put those things out. And I want to like transparently share this with you guys so that hopefully you can dissect your experiences. Maybe it's at your job or it's in school or it's in a relationship so you can understand how I think and I dissect things um, because maybe something that I do could help you and if not just throw it in the trash that's fine too but um, so what I did was I recognized that I was 
kind of struggling and I'm really, I don't ever want to force something. I don't think that we should ever force something. I then think that if we're struggling, that there's something there to either learn or to do. And what I realized was really simple is just that I had had such high output for so many days that truthfully my brain was just not in flow that day and there was nothing really deeper going on. It was just, I was tired. I didn't have the best sleep the night before. Um, and I was trying to still operate at my highest level. And so what I've personally learned, especially as like a high performer who's in these, you know, situations where I always really do need to perform, whether it be an interview or a video or a podcast or whatever, um, is that I've learned to recognize when I'm not in that flow and I've learned to not force it. And rather than forcing it, move into surrender and to acceptance. And so what that looks like is saying, okay, so this isn't happening today. <laughs> Let me go ahead and accept that. Let me figure out what does, what is it that I need? What do I need right now? Do I need to simply move on to different kind of work? Maybe instead of, you know, doing a podcast, maybe I actually need to like write out my thoughts. Um, maybe I need to move on to something in my coaching program or, you know, some of my other work. Um, and then maybe I need a nap. That could be it too. So um, for me personally, I knew that I needed rest. Um, so I actually took the day off the gym um, that day and gave myself what I needed. I needed that rest. And then um, this past weekend, I did something that I don't do that often, but I had the laziest Saturday that I have had in all of 2021. And it was just exactly what I needed. I woke up, I had an incredible breakfast, and then the goal was to get to nap as soon as I could, to get to the nap as soon as I could. So I ate, I slept, I did go to the grocery store and grab some things. I had to get a remote too. And then I turned on Netflix. I watched some Netflix, literally just relaxed and just was so lazy. <laughs> and so, and guys, it literally recharged me so much. And I think there's a lot of people that listen to the show that are probably similar to me. And a lot of you guys have jobs or you're in school. Maybe you're in a competition prep. Maybe you're in the Evolve X program. Maybe you're also a parent. Maybe you're also in a relationship and you just have so many things and so many people pulling at you all the time. So I just want to remind you that sometimes you need a day to just chill. You need a day just to relax and to be and to be still and to nap and to have a snack, you know, and just allow yourself that time. Because what it did was I had that day and then Sunday was a pretty, you know, regular Sunday. Um, and then Monday comes around and I'm refreshed. I'm recharged. I'm excited. I, I want to go to work. You know, I feel that excitement again. So for those of you that deal with things like maybe overwhelm, maybe sometimes reaching burnout, which is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, I hope to bring to your attention that, one, be aware of when it's happening and then two, give yourself what it needs. Maybe yours doesn't look like a whole day of doing nothing and relaxing and maybe sometimes it does, but I just wanted to bring it up to hopefully encourage you guys to not resist when you're feeling that you're not able to do what you normally do. And then the other thing too is just to not judge what it is that you're doing. Um, I always share that I'm really big on execution and that execution is key and I fully believe that and I think that sometimes you have to execute when circumstances are not ideal. So I do think that sometimes you got to put out a podcast that you don't feel is the best podcast you've ever done. Because if you will just consistently execute, like I've mentioned before, you will always learn, you will always grow from it. And it's one of those things where you can't expect yourself to always be perfect. You can't expect yourself and perfection doesn't even exist. So that's a line of, of itself. But it, I mean, you can't expect yourself to always be at that 100% level. If you only put yourself out there when you feel like you're your absolute best, you're going to be missing out on so many life experiences, so many learning opportunities that you could be having if you would simply just get out there and execute, even if it looks messy, even if it looks not ideal or not your best, that's okay too. You know, if I had always waited until I was at my ideal or my best, this podcast literally wouldn't exist. Because I just one day just sat there and just pressed record and started speaking. And now we have um, many listeners all over the world. Uh, we hit. So I, I wanted to update you guys. I shared previously um, in the year that a goal that I had for myself, which was a really scary goal, 
was that I wanted to hit 1 million podcast downloads in overall for the show. So a million podcast downloads for the Evolve Thimley show. And I've been working really hard every single month. And I've noticed that you guys have been helping along with sharing one of your favorite podcasts, which shameless ask, if you guys do have a favorite podcast, even if it's not this one, would you guys do me a favor and would you share it? Would you text it to somebody? Would you share it on your Instagram story? Uh, however it is that you like to share it, just share it with one person that you think uh, it would benefit. I'd really appreciate that. And it really helps me because, you know, I can put out content all day as much as I want. But if I don't have the help of the listeners who really love the show, are invested in the show, then the truth is I probably won't reach that goal. But I did want to update you guys. We have gone, um, we've now hit 800,000 downloads, which is just really incredible. I'm mind blown by it. I'm so thankful that you guys believe in the message and in the content that I put out. So I just want to say thank you real quick. Um, and yeah, I, I'm still, I still believe that we can hit that million download by the end of December, December 31st. So I will keep you guys updated on that, but um, you know, you have to set those big goals and I would never reach that goal if I only waited for my ideal self to put out that content. So I hope that in your own life, you can ask yourself, where am I holding my ba myself back? Where do I have limiting beliefs? Where is it that I'm not allowing myself to show up for myself simply because I feel I'm not my best? Maybe it's in the gym and it's just a workout session. Maybe it's in your relationship or maybe it's out on a date and you're not allowing yourself to show up because you feel like you're not your best or you're not quote unquote perfect, right? Or your hair doesn't look right or your makeup or whatever. Guys, sometimes it's a little messy. Sometimes life is a little messy and not as ideal and that's okay. Show up for yourself on those days too. Just remember that sometimes you need that break. Sometimes you need to refresh and recharge. This previous weekend, it was also Olympia 2021. So I just want to give a shout out to the Bikini Olympia winners. Um, we have Jennifer Dory on the win. She is Miss Bikini Olympia 2021. Congratulations. I'm so happy for her. She's such a sweet and such a kind soul. And she's also with Team Fit Body Fusion, which you guys know that's uh, my team. I coach with Coach Jamie. Um, so congrats to Team Fit Body Fusion for that win. We have Laura Lee in the second place finish. Laura Lee will always have such a special place in my heart. That girl has a heart of gold, a work ethic to match it. And I've been really honored to get to know her a little bit deeper. Um, you guys know she's been on the show two or three times now. So maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll have to have a third or fourth. Um, but she is just such a gem and I'm so happy for her. Truly, I believe that was her best package. I was just mind blown. I know we all were. Um, with all of the Olympians, um, but especially Laura Lee, her and I have more of a friendship with her than some of my other friends on stage. Um, you know, we've been able to connect through the podcast and just through living in LA at the same time. So just congratulations to her. I'm so proud of her. So happy for her. Ashley K came in with a third place win. So happy for her. I have to say one thing that I've really appreciated about Ashley is that she's had such an incredible attitude and such an attitude and position of just gratitude throughout all of this. You know, she is a multiple Miss Bikini Olympia winner and she competes because she genuinely loves it and she's really damn good at it. I think we can all say. Um, but one thing I've really appreciated about her is, you know, sometimes, especially when you're at the elite level and you're used to winning, people can formulate an ego and they can formulate expectations. And one thing I've just loved about how she's really shared and portrayed herself on social media is that she has no expectations and that she's truly grateful for what, wherever she ends up placing, you know, and she just has such a lighthearted attitude about it where she goes to a show and she's like, I'm so honored to be in the first call out, you know, to the rest of us. We're like, okay, duh. Like you're Ashley K. You look incredible. You're always on point. Of course you're going to do well. Um, but she just has such a sweet and a humble attitude about her. And I think that she's a really great uh, role model in this industry. So congrats to her. Maureen in fourth place. Maureen's a friend from LA. Uh, we both used to train at Gold's Gym Venice when I lived out there. And she's just so great. Such a hard worker, has an incredible physique. Her posing is on point. So congrats to her for, for that fourth place finish. And then Issa in the top five, she got fifth place. Uh, Issa is also a previous Miss Bikini Olympia winner. So 
who was such a cred- an incredible bikini at Olympia. The whole Olympia was great. So shout out to all the other divisions as well. I just wanted to mention uh, the bikini division as a lot of my listeners are heavy into the bikini field and competing and everything. You know, one thing that I would say competing really taught me and one thing that I recognize in other competitors as well, especially the competitors at the Olympia, is to always have a position in a heart posture of willing to learn and willing to improve. You will never hear an elite athlete say that they're good or say that they're done or say that the only thing they need to do is X. As an elite athlete, as somebody who's been competing multiple times and had the judging panel judge them multiple times, everybody knows that there's always a little bit more that you can improve on. Or else, why would it be that the most elite athletes in the world get feedback after the Olympia, right? And it's because they want to know. They want to learn and grow of how they can be better, how they can improve, even just that 1%. Caring about that 1% is the thing that helps them even get to the Olympia in the first place. So really incredible. I didn't obviously go to this year's Olympia, um, but I was able to kind of catch some of the highlights. And, you know, I'll always be involved in the bodybuilding world, regardless if I'm currently on stage or currently off stage. So it's really incredible. I'm always inspired by those athletes. And I think it just requires such an extreme level of dedication to this. So just a round of applause to all of them. So I'm going to wrap up the episode here quickly. I wanted to mention that I do have an Evolve X Worldwide program. Evolve X Worldwide is an entry level mentorship program. Currently, we are meeting two times every single month and we'll do an hour long Zoom call. It's video Zoom call with everybody from all over the world. Um, Anyone and everyone is welcome to join if you have the position of wanting to learn, grow and evolve in your life. This is not just a place to get mentorship from myself, but it's also a place to create and to cultivate a community of other people that are dedicated to evolving in their lives. So if you guys are looking for that community, that friendship, that network, that accountability, this is such an incredible way. It's only $14.99 every single month. And every month you get those two calls. You can also rewatch all of our previous mentorship calls. Um, So you get hours upon hours of mentorship calls that are already there. And one thing that's been really incredible is having some of the Evolve X Worldwide members share that they've made such great changes in their lives, like a new job or getting out of a bad relationship and moving across the country and different shifts in their life that they've made as a result of investing in themselves in this entry level program. So if you guys aren't involved in anything, that's a really incredible um, space and community that I would love to invite you guys to. I would love to see your face on the next call and get to video chat in person. I think that would be incredible. And I just can't say enough good things about the community of people that are there. You know, it's not just me talking or sharing. It's those that are in attendance that are pouring into their community and sharing when they feel that they can share somebody who might be struggling. You know, that's the power of community is coming together because we all have such different experiences that we're able to teach the things that we've personally experienced and grown through. So I definitely know that it will be such an incredible place for you to come, be accepted, be loved, be seen, be heard, and also encouraged and inspired to grow and evolve in your life and to go after those really big goals for yourself. Now, the Evolve X Worldwide program is completely different than my Evolve X Premium Coaching program. So I want to make sure those are distinctly different. There are links for both of those below. My Evolve X program is actually closed uh, for 2021. We've already accepted the last clients of the year. So we don't have any more positions open for that, but we will have new spots open in January of 2022. So make sure to stay tuned for that because we would definitely love the opportunity to work with you guys there. So that's going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Evolve with Emily show. Don't forget to share your favorite episode with a friend to help us all get to that 1 million download goal that I have for the end of the year. I really appreciate your help on that. And I hope you guys have an incredible day. I'll see you next time.